Hey everybody, what's up? Today we're going to be looking at a video called Why Woke People Are Making Everything Ugly. It's a video from the channel Think Before You Sleep. That's right, old friend of the show. I made a couple videos about this channel and I'm going to keep doing it because it's I, I have a lot of fun. The video loosely centers around criticizing an ad campaign from the soap company Dove, which is Dove's real virtual beauty campaign, which focuses on inclusivity and representation for women in video games. The plan here is to go through his video and look at some of the arguments made in it. Arguments in support of his general theme thesis that this ad campaign is bad for various reasons, including the fact that it is part of a larger trend of wokeness in media, and wokeness is bad for various reasons. What does wokeness mean in this case? Well, we're going to find out, I'm sure. Think Before You Sleep tends to jump around a bit in his videos, so I've ordered the arguments in a way that I think makes most sense for viewers. If you want to see his video, though, in all its glory, I've linked it below, so you can go check it out to make sure I'm not misrepresenting anything. Okay, we're doing this again. Let's begin right now. <laughs> So to start things off, uh, this video is a little bit tough to break down because a lot of it is just think before you sleep, giving his opinions on stuff. These opinions are often generally unrelated to actual critiques of the Dove ad campaign. So for example, this clip. Oh look, the ad comes with an article. We're bringing real beauty to the virtual world. Does the term beauty even mean anything anymore? Or is everybody just the same regardless of effort? You're all 10 out of 10s in mommy's eyes. Thanks for the participation trophy, Dove. He thinks that these women are not hot. He does not think they're beautiful. They're definitely not 10 out of 10s. So the definition of beauty is here being perverted by Dove. But all of this relies on the assumption that beauty has some objective definition, which is an opinion. An opinion that happens to be very silly, but you know, that's just my opinion. So we got a stalemate there. He later talks about how he went to an art museum with another anti-feminist YouTuber and that he didn't like the art. And then he takes a random shot at these YouTubers thumbnails because he also doesn't like them. There is so much crap in the frame that I have no idea what to focus on, but apparently a lot of anti-capitalist YouTube channels think that this style of art that has all the grace of a messy room looks good because a number of them use this ugly style of elementary school collage art to create their thumbnails. Okay, man, sounds good. Can't really do anything with that though. Or this clip. About a month ago, Dove came out with their latest body positivity campaign, by partnering with Epic Games and using the Unreal Engine to create 3D models of realistic women. Wait, this was done with Unreal Engine? Really? Why do all these models look like crappy World of Warcraft avatars from 2006? Dove has hundreds of millions of dollars and this is the best they can come up with for their banner? I mean, there are YouTubers working by themselves on no budget making full AAA quality playable renders with Unreal Engine, while these renders from Dove barely break the PS2 era. So Dove is a bad, lazy company because their graphics are worse than a Zelda animation that a YouTuber made with a fraction of the budget. The key word there is worse because again, that's subjective. He's acting as if the objective barometer for a quality animation is that you need 10 RTX 9090s to render it. But these Dove animations were not created with that purpose of supreme 8K quality in mind. Also, I will say that to me, these just look like Fortnite characters and Fortnite runs on Unreal Engine. I don't feel like they're that much different. But regardless, that's not what they're supposed to be about. They're about representation. So to someone who's interested in representation in games, the Dove animation would likely be better. Think Before You Sleep is not one of those people, clearly. And so, all right, we can't really say anything about that. It's just how he feels and that's great for him. One last example that I thought was kind of funny was him saying that because the reason he plays games is to escape reality, characters in games shouldn't be ugly because he doesn't want to insert himself into an ugly character. Not to mention that video games are primarily about escapism, and if I'm playing a character, I want to play someone who is more attractive than me so I can self-insert and escape from my less glamorous life. Why would I want to fantasize about being ugly? So he doesn't want to fantasize about being ugly. He wants to instead fantasize about being the juicy thighs, muscle mommy Chun Li. That's fine, actually. I think that's totally fine. But once again, that's his opinion, right? That video games are primarily about one thing, the thing that he happens to care about. All right, so since the opinions can't be addressed, we're just going to move forward and look at the arguments. I know I could have done this first, but I feel like the opinions are such a substantial part of his video that I needed to talk about them before or moving on, but maybe that's wrong. I don't know. So first up, Think Before You Sleep makes the argument that Dove is a lazy company because they show a statistic on the screen that he doesn't believe is true. Real beauty takes effort and everything about this project from Dove says, we put no effort into this. For example, 
you were not there. You don't exist. The things are not made for you. Okay, I don't believe that statistic at all. Where did you get that number? Did you simply ask three of your British friends? Because there is no way that most British women are eternally offended snowflakes who care about that kind of stuff. So this is the Opinium Women in Gaming survey from early 2021. It was a survey of about 1,400 United Kingdom gamers age 18 and over. And one of the key findings here was that 69% of women felt that there needs to be more female characters in video games in general. The two-thirds statistic that Dove shows here, that is from this survey. And here you might say, well, Noah, Dove didn't cite where they found that statistic on the screen, so a viewer of the ad would have no idea Idea where to search to confirm its validity. And well, firstly, Think Before You Sleep is not just a viewer of the ad, he is a YouTube journalist, let's call him, with a big audience that's making a video that critiques this ad. All he had to do was a single Google search with some relevant terms to find this survey. It took me 10 seconds. It's really not that much work, but he didn't do it, which, you know, that's lazy. This is completely lazy. Sorry, I just wanted to use that clip. It's a, it's a great sound effect. I think it's fun. Lazy, 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 lazy. Later in this video, Think Before You Sleep makes an argument about another statistic from the Opinium survey, arguing that the statistic must be bullshit because some people online didn't like it. Where exactly did you get that stat? This time it says 74%. So on this occasion, they would have had to survey at least 50 people. That's more than three, but what do they do? Survey the office? How exactly did they ask the questions in the survey? Because there's no way that much of the general population agrees with this woke narrative, considering that in places like America, half the population are conservatives who don't care about this, and tons of liberals are anti-feminist too. So there's no way you got a vast majority on this one. The proof being that you had to censor the comments on the video. So his proof that the general population isn't with the wokeness is that the comments were turned off on one of these Dove animations. Now, let's just ignore the fact that this channel actually has comments turned off on all of their videos and just zoom in on the likes counter where we can see that it has 500 likes and over 16,000 dislikes. That's 99%. That's a pretty wild statistic, right? If you do a survey on a topic, it's very rare to see a figure like that, 99%. This isn't exactly a controlled experiment though, is it? There's a pretty important uncontrolled variable here, which is that hundreds of rabid anti-feminist YouTubers all made the same video talking about how the Dove ad is dumb and bad because it's woke, which might have some influence on the type of people that end up seeing the ad, given that the ad was only really talked about online by these anti-feminists. Just a thought there, you know? All right, so let's look at another one of his arguments here, and this one regards the topic of character customization. That, and the fact that the people who made this ad clearly don't play video games, because there are plenty of them out there with extreme levels of character customization, and it's been that way for a while, as I remember that in Fantasy Star Online from over 20 years ago, you could customize your character to be a short person of size. I don't look like that. Not everyone looks like that. A character that looks like me in a video game and be like, yo, this baby's fire. Yes, you can do that. If you want to create an albino character with red hair in a game, that's possible. Please, Dove, tell me more about how things that already exist in video games don't exist. So he's correct in pointing out that plenty of games offer character customization. He shows a couple, one of them is from 20 years ago, and one current game where he even recreated the albino woman from the ad. At least I think he did that. And if so, you know, nice. Putting in some effort, we love to see it. Lazy. The question one might ask from this point, though, is that if that's the case, if these games already exist and have for 20 years, then why do women still feel underrepresented, as the survey showed? And I know he didn't read the survey because he didn't Google the survey, but I feel like that's an interesting question to ask regardless, right? Just to give my own thoughts on it. Generally speaking, I feel like gamers play games that they want to play. How they decide on what those games are is multifaceted. Maybe they have friends that play them or they find them in game stores or they grew up playing similar games, they see advertisements, and so on. The stat we have shows that even though women are choosing the games they want to play, probably, I don't see why they wouldn't be, other than maybe League of Legends addiction, the games they're choosing do not have the representation that women feel is adequate. And so, unless you want to push women to play games they don't want to play, just because those games have character customization, then one pretty reasonable solution here would be to push for inclusivity in all games. Just because it's currently a 
available doesn't mean it's adequate. And clearly, according to the statistics, at least, it's, it's not. So there's still a need for some change. That change could very well be having customization offered in more games. And one way to push for that is to increase awareness that that would help. Kind of like what Dove is doing with their ad campaign, which of course is not only about that. Dove is a soap company. They are trying to sell so, but this campaign does obviously represent a large scale media push towards inclusivity, which is a good thing on its own. Don't throw the inclusivity out with the soap company's exploitation that doesn't actually ring as well as the baby bathwater version. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I want to look at is Think Before You Sleep's arguments about fat people. He makes the argument that the body positivity in this ad campaign isn't about accepting all forms of unconventional beauty. It's really just about fat acceptance. There's a second part to this Dove campaign where they decided to feature one of the models in her own commercial. Now, looking at this cast, if we're trying to promote body positivity, we have several people here who look a certain way because of how they were born or they're in a situation that's no fault of their own. There's Sam, who is in a wheelchair, Lily, a woman with Down syndrome, and Coco, a woman with a skin disease that caused her to lose her pigmentation. Surely these women are all great choices to promote self-acceptance in the face of a situation that you can't change. Nope, Dove picked the obese woman. He goes on to play an animation from this campaign that features Cynthia, a fat woman, as a video game superhero lady. And then he says this. Are we still going to gaslight people into thinking that body positivity has anything to do with being compassionate and understanding towards people who are victims of unfortunate circumstances? I hope not, because obviously it's all just a fat acceptance narrative and a way to enable food addicts who are too in denial to fix their health issues and their appearance. Okay, uh, so first off, the other women, the ones he has deemed worthy of being body positive, they are in the ad. They're in the ad, see, there they are, talking, standing, there's them again doing gaming stuff. They're just not in the other ad, the animation. The fact that they made a separate animation that features a fat woman doesn't remove the other women from the first ad. There's two ads, they're still there. The first ad even includes similar animations. No one is being gaslit here, other than think before you you sleep's audience, I guess, because they're both still there, they're included. His real problem here is that fat people were included in this campaign at all. He elaborates on this a little bit later, and this one's just great, more investigative journalism, uncovering a conspiracy that Dove actually did this campaign to make you buy ice cream. In a previous video, I said that the owners of Dove, Unilever, had a vested interest in fat acceptance because they own Ben and Jerry's ice cream. I have to apologize for that statement because it was extremely inaccurate. Unilever actually owns five different ice cream brands. They own a popular mayonnaise brand, they own Popsicle, and they sometimes partner with Nabisco to make good humor versions of Oreos. These make up most of their food brands and the remaining ones are still pretty much processed junk food. So is it a surprise that they would use their soap company to promote an ideology that causes people to buy more junk food like ice cream? No, it can't be about that. It's about over-sexualizing women. Okay, okay, he's jumping to the next thing again. We gotta stop him here. The first thing to notice here is that Think Before You Sleep is pulling a little trick on you. He's doing a gag and a goof on his viewers. He calls what Dove is doing promoting an ideology that allows you to buy more junk food. To promote an ideology that causes people to buy more junk food like ice cream? This is a trick because in doing this, he is grouping this specific ad campaign in with some vague notion of a fat acceptance ideology, which allows him to then criticize that ideology, the totally vague one, through the medium of this campaign without actually addressing the content of the ad. In order to see how he does this, I think we should rewind a bit and actually watch the animation that he's talking about to see if his reading of that animation actually supports what he's saying here, that it's pro-junk food propaganda. Is the secret agenda to put cookies in your mouth actually there? Let's find out. So the character here, Cynthia, after defeating this goblin guy, whatever he is, he's like an ice balrog, she goes back into the dressing room, she takes her armor off, and when she does this, it reveals that she is actually fat. And the armor was constraining her body, forming her into a slimmer figure, one that's the default among traditional sexualized female video game characters. Once her constraining armor is removed, she can relax. She is comfortable. She sits on a chair, she kicks up her feet. Clearly, this is something that she prefers. Then, when she's back 
up to film, she decides to stay that way, to not fit back into her tight, uncomfortable armor, the armor her producers likely make her wear, but to go out how she wants to and feel good doing it. Then she goes off onto the set looking much happier than she did before. So where in this ad is there some push to get you to buy junk food? Where could that be drawn from? Is there a candy bar? Is there a big sign saying buy Nabisco products? Is Cynthia sitting down to crack open a nice cold jar of mayonnaise. Uh, no, she's not, and none of those things happen. What there is, though, in this ad is a fat woman. A fat woman who, in the narrative, rejects society's constraints on her and improves her situation, alleviates harm because of it. And for Think Before You Sleep, that story on its face amounts to pro-junk food propaganda. A fat person is in a commercial and they aren't running on a treadmill while eating celery, so that makes it a pro-obesity commercial. But, you know, Let's play along here, right? Let's just entertain his point here and say, okay, a fat woman accepting herself in an ad, you know, it's a stretch, but maybe it does cause some people to accept their fatness in a way that harms them. After all, being fat is generally considered unhealthy in the medical field. So maybe this is contributing to the obesity epidemic through the normalization of being fat. So is this the case? Does fat representation make people fatter? Does limiting this representation contribute to any sort of health benefits? And well, uh, no. No, it doesn't. There's no evidence for that whatsoever. Not to think before you sleep videos require any evidence, he's just talking. But the research actually shows that the opposite is true. Quoting from a meta-analysis here on the relationship between body image and body weight control, misperception and dissatisfaction with body weight are risk factors for participating in an unhealthy lifestyle and make it harder to follow a healthier lifestyle. Body image disturbance also made it more likely to underreport calorie intake. Negative body image is also closely linked to multiple different health problems, including things like depression and stress. Depression and stress are linked to weight gain and obesity. Ergo, having a negative body image does not help you lose weight. Oftentimes, it's the opposite. It helps you gain weight, and it keeps you generally unhealthy. On top of this, in the same way that negative body image is bad for your health, positive body image is actually good for it. There's a study here, positive body image is positively associated with emotional and psychological and social well-being in British adults. Body appreciation significantly predicted all dimensions of well-being. Think Before You Sleep hates it when people are fat. He wants them to stop being fat. So he should actually love this Dove ad campaign. The campaign is promoting positive self-image, and positive self-image promotes health in a myriad of ways, which does include people maintaining healthier habits when it comes to eating. That's what he wants, right? The fact that he hates it demonstrates to me two things. One, that Think Before You Sleep is operating with military-grade media illiteracy, given how he so badly misinterpreted this animation, and two, that he doesn't actually care about fat people. He just doesn't want to see them in media, he doesn't want to see them at all. So he gets mad at the Dove ad instead of, you know, looking away, doing something else, which is, it's funny, you know, it's it, very funny. <laughs> The final point I want to talk about today concerns the idea of sexualization. Think Before You Sleep doesn't like it when characters in games are wrongfully labeled as sexualized. Había dos personajes, mujeres, nada más. Los dos eran dos personajes super sexualizados. Y nada, eran las dos opciones que tenía para, para elegir. Sorry, for some reason they had her speak Spanish even though she can speak English. But she said two female characters from a game that they never identified were over sexualized. Whatever that means, because they'll call Laura Croft hypersexualized for just standing there and doing nothing sexual. So he doesn't think that Lara here is being sexual. Laura? Lara? It's spelled Lara, but I thought it was Laura. I don't know. His reasoning for that is that she's just standing there. Okay, so first off, does he think that a character needs to be butt naked and doing the splits in order to be sexualized? There are other factors that go into this definition beyond what a character is doing. In the case here, Laura is wearing short shorts and a tight crop top, revealing her legs and midriff. 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 Pancake flat midriff. Laura is a character who shoots people and runs through the woods and shit. This outfit is clearly impractical for that purpose, but she's wearing it because she is being sexual. The main thing with this example, though, is that Laura's body has proportions that are unrealistic in comparison with the vast majority of people. These proportions are considered sexually attractive and are thus created by the developers with the intent of appealing to the male gamer gaze. Those are the arguments in favor of the idea that this character is being sexualized. Okay, so now let's roll the next clip uh, of this guy, what this guy's saying. But I get it. Video games sexualize women way too much. 
Let's see how Dub intends to remedy this problem. Well, that's one way to start. We have a woman here who was fully covered up, who then changed into something that was more revealing. She basically is in the same outfit that Laura Croft was in. So he takes Dove to task here for sexualizing this character, Cynthia, because she's showing more skin immediately after crying about how this isn't sexualized. Do you notice anything here about anything related to skin? Um, she's showing it, a, a bunch of it. His definition of sexualization here has changed. To him, this is sexualized but this isn't? Look, all she's doing is sitting there. Or just standing there and doing nothing sexual. That doesn't make any sense. It does, though, when you realize that his definition is entirely dependent on whether or not it helps his argument. A major theme of this ad is that Cynthia is closer to this body type, but is required to wear armor that squeezes her into this body type. The armor is the Sexualized one, dude. Please, I beg of you, go take a media literacy course. God, my God. Okay, the last part with this is real weird, so go ahead and strap in. It concerns the framing of one of the shots from the animation, and Think Before You Sleep has certain feelings about this shot. Let's see what's next. So now we have a bent over ass shot that is center of the frame that adds nothing to the story. They went full-on anime camera angles, and somehow they're going to claim that it's not an attempt that's sexualizing the character. Buddy, buddy, you're real worked up. You gotta relax. When Think Before You Sleep sees this shot here, to him, it's the same as this shot here. Now, do we notice anything different about these two shots? Well, the anime shot is just one thing. It's someone's butt, it's a low angle of a skirt, and it's, a you know, very... That's all that's in the frame. But the shot of Cynthia has other information in it. Namely, it shows her standing between two posters of herself in the armor. Now, this is up for interpretation, of course, but my reading of it is that she's constrained and sandwiched in the frame between these posters, just like the armor constrains and sandwiches her body. And so when she leaves, she's breaking away from it or something. But even if Think Before You Sleep wanted to have an accurate reading of this shot, he wouldn't be able to. Because when he looks at this shot, all he he sees is this. He's so worked up about seeing a woman from behind that his brain fails to render the rest of the frame, causing him to miss some key information that would help him interpret this image more accurately. He blames Dove for this somehow, which is amazing, but it's also a great example of how sex works. He watched the ad and got to this frame, and instead of taking it all in and looking at it objectively, he looks right at Cynthia's ass and doesn't see anything else. Truly just wild stuff and a pretty interesting example of a self-report. You gotta calm down when you're making videos. You gotta go outside, take a walk, come back in when you're ready. Okay, so those are all the arguments I wanted to look at today in the video. Let me know what you thought of this. You know, I had fun looking at these and breaking them down. Think Before You Sleep has already said he doesn't want to respond to my videos, and that's totally fine. I'm allowed to do this because I'm the smaller creator, so I'm not, you know, dogpiling a little guy. I'm just clout sharking, and that's good. <laughs> okay, bye everybody. See ya. <laughs>